Hey everybody, welcome to Formula Essentials. My name is Maria Marquis, and in this video, we're going to take a look at, in my mind, the most valuable formula piece that you'll use dock after dock after dock. Honestly, if you only know the filter formula, you're gonna be set for most of the things that you do as part of your day-to-day -day work inside of Coda. So let's first just break down what the filter formula does. What filter does is it takes a part of your table and, you guessed it, filters it. It's when you want to look at just one part of your data set to understand something about it. So let's go here into my Coda doc. I've got this big table full of blog posts. And notice we have titles, the author, the date it was published. We've got some select lists going on here, as well as some text fields. And maybe I want to know, hey, how many articles do we have in Al's column? Well, I could, of course, scroll through my table, but that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. <laughs> so we'll use the filter formula instead. So when we're ready to do a formula in Coda, we always type equals. That's saying, hey, Coda, we're ready to roll. The first thing I need to do for my filter formula is say which table I'm interested in. In this case, it's that blog post table. Now we need to do the next step. And the way we tell Coda we're ready for the next step is to just type a dot. If you want to impress your friends, you can say, yes, this is the dot operator. Great cocktail party talk. Now we need to decide what we're going to filter. If we're interested in one thing, like just show me the things that are Al's column, I'm gonna say the category is equal to Al's column. We're looking for one criteria. But now, what if we have multiple criteria that we're interested in? We can expand the middle of this filter formula to meet exactly what we're looking for. So let's actually just uh, close out of this formula for a second, just so we can see what's happening here inside of the table. What if we want to know all of the things that have Al's column, but that were also featured? So we have this checkbox over here. Well, what we'll do is we'll just go back to our formula, give it a right click to open it up again. And now all we need to do is type and. This lets me know, hey, Coda, I'm looking for multiple things. So here we can say featured is equal to, but this is a checklist. So we're not going to say checked or unchecked. We're going to use true or false. In this case, we're interested in if featured is equal to true. Now we can have multiple things that we're looking at. But maybe you're interested in if it's Al's column or it was also featured. Either one, you're kind of okay with it. All you need to do is just change and to or, and then you're ready to roll. So what I want to highlight here is that this formula is reading just like a sentence that you would say to ask your question. For example, hey, of our blog posts, how many of them had the category being Al's column or they were featured? It reads just like human speech. It just looks a little bit different. But every good sentence has an ending. So now we can decide what do we want to do with that information? We've filtered the table, but now we need to know what do we want to do with it? And Coda has a bunch of different endings that you can apply. For example, if we just wanted a number, like, hey, how many of these um, exist that meet my criteria? I would say count but maybe I want a list of them. No problem, I could just change from count to a bulleted list. Or maybe I don't want bullet points, I want numbers. I can do that too. We could do a numbered list, or we could average some all kinds of other mathematical opportunities. But the thing I want you to take away from this is filter allows you to look at a slice of your data depending on your criteria, and just write it like a sentence, separating each step with that dot. All right, now it's your turn. Start filtering your data and see what comes up. 